Man, I love Batman. Ever since I was a kid, I've never not liked Batman. I feel like it is really hard to really fuck up Batman when it comes to Batman media in general, whether it comes to either animation or a movie or even just... <sighs> I guess I was wrong. There's not gonna be any more good Batman media. Oh! My goodness. Dude, I was having a ball when I was watching Batman K Crusader. It has so many good things that's, that goes well with it. Having a different interpretation of Batman that's relatively the same to his core and sort of just the values that worked from before, but feeling like the pieces get moved around just like in the anime series original. And have a start from the beginning to see which different routes that they're going to take in these different interpretation of Batman. With me also saying that I genuinely thought that there wasn't any changes that I didn't like. I liked all the changes. It just feels like it works. Oh yeah, like, comment, subscribe. With the series film semi-similar to the anime series in the sense of like a Batman goes through each episode dealing with something new and different but at the same time there's also that case of a build-up and a build-up that's always been there since the beginning or the build-up that gets paid off at the end and at the same time I love the series because it feels like it's always consequences for what you do in your actions there's nothing that gets away scot-free except for these two characters right here but I'll talk about them later and then just having all of this just feeling so refreshing just getting a taste of Batman from back in the day where they it be just ground level superhero work just giving a taste of just like everything and a grand scale cosmic entities are going all this other stuff is great trust me i love it i always will be but we gotta pay respects to our love to all these street level superheroes and see what's happening on the ground level and seeing their grand scale or their cosmic event which is just like a mob boss or maybe just like uh someone's taking over the streets or ninjas flooding the streets or daredevil or luke cage fighting in harlem or even just seeing green arrow be green arrow Okay, let's just go with that. But back on topic, I really want to go over why I love Batman Cape Crusader and just some of the character breakdowns that I did like or some that I want to go over, as well as there will be spoilers. So here we go in three, two, one. I think it's pretty right and the most obvious choice to start off with a Batman and sort of what I love the most about Batman in this series. I really do appreciate it in some Batman iterations where we sit in that toxic waste. That's Batman when he's really, really dark and moody and he's just extremely upset at the world and cold to everybody, including including himself, including his friends, including Alfred as well. Extremely dark in nature and sort of growing into that person of the actual Batman we know and love and sort of has more of a heart, a specific moment in time. And that's really what we get with this Batman right here. Sort of reminded me a little bit of the Batman movie. I really love that movie, but besides the point, this is a Batman that is specifically in the beginning stages of his whole journey when it comes to being Batman in the 1940s or the pseudo 1940s sort of kind of fake if we think about it. Eh, not the point. I think this show has multiple build-ups, and one of the more sleeper build-ups that's in the show is specifically how Batman sort of treats everyone around him that he basically sort of calls friends as Batman, whether it be Barbara Gordon, whether it be Alfred, whether it be anyone else that's around him. He sort of slowly but surely starts to talk to them and slowly but surely starts to open up and just say, oh, I'm sorry, or oh, Alfred, I really love you. I can't lose you. I'm sorry. What the hell were you thinking? If you... I can't do this job without you. And this sort of sick, twisted way, this feels like also his therapy. This feels like what he's doing to cope with everything that's been going on and what makes him inherently feel better, but also wanting to save the community that is Gotham. And I will use this time to talk about specific therapists, but I'll just wait a little bit later because I still want to talk about Batman. But with Batman at the same time, I really do love how they sprinkle in his origin. It's not something that inherently gets shoved into your face and not something that's, oh, a big, long, gated thing. It's just there. What do you mean by that? But it's sprinkled in a little bit throughout the episode or a little bit throughout some episodes showing you what his reaction is from him bl not blinking, from him being extremely quiet. You can just tell he's been thinking about this moment over and over and over and over and over again until he breaks and then he talks to Alfred. They're going to pay. They? All of them. I'm gonna be completely honest. If you said that to me, He's getting put into an orphanage the next day. But wanted to move on to another topic, which I think is really extremely important when it comes to this show, is a topic I'll just call it straight up good cops and bad cops. Now, this includes with Flash as well as Bullock. And Bullock is usually a good cop, and there's some iterations where he is a, apparently a bad cop. But I really like him as his bad cop, as well as Flash's partner, who is sort of like the main one, the main big head. Ah, no! Me next! Do me next! Not if you were the last cop on the force, Bullock. Good luck with the crime fighting Gotham's finest. Oh, and you too, Bullock. <laughs> oh, an easy case like that, Bullock. Shut your pie hole, Cohen. Take it easy, Bullock. Yeah. 
Seriously, Scarface. And what it seemed like if they really do care for each other, but if it push came to shove, they would easily shove each other to the wolves. At least Flash would shove Bullock to the wolves in a heartbeat. With them also being the most crookedest cops I think I've ever seen in my life, whether it be them leaving people in a precinct of a, of a building that's gonna blow up or even let out a whole convict to try to attempt to get out the Batman and endanger a whole single neighborhood. Or just working or being with other villains and giving them tips and advice on what they should be doing. With the added bonus of taking bribes and just doing the worst things humanly possible. Then there's also just the good cops, which is just Renee Montoya as well as the commissioner himself, Gordon. And you know what? I also put Barbara in there because Barbara's there most of the times and has an extremely interesting relationship with her father where she always loves and cares for him. But she's also a lawyer at the same time and he's a commissioner. So they sort of butt heads on that regard where one of them believes, hey, he knew what he was doing. He should be in jail. And the other one believes, hey, jail is always the best option. We should try to get him out. And he honestly didn't do anything that bad. Very interesting. But I say the real reason why I do love this dynamic of the good cops and the bad cops because it makes it like a power struggle between both of these two factions where it's like the good cops are trying to do the best they can and do what they can and then the bad cops are sort of kind of getting rewarded for their bad actions even though it's not known that it's a bad action but they get away with it anyway and sort of succeed in what they're doing. I wonder if it's going to be like that for season two as well as there is one other cop that does get punished for what he did or what he was about to do to someone another character. Another reason why I also like this in the season because it feels extremely political and also feels like it's chess. You have to make the right move at the right specific time and just do what you have to do to save either the, the king or the queen and, and try to stay in the game and just try to make it to the next play. Now the next topic I want to talk about is one of the most important things obviously when it comes to Batman is the villains. The first one I want to go over is Harley Quinn. Oh my, I love Harley Quinn in this iteration. It's very interesting the way it sort of goes about it, right? Because I can't fully argue with Harley Quinn. Like, I understand, but I don't fully agree. Well, Harley Quinn still has that upbeat nature whenever you do see her. And also with her being very pushy. And I feel like they take those traits and up it to 11 for the reason why she's a villain. Where she is still a psychiatrist. She's still doing her thing. But it's certain people that are just extremely pieces of garbage. Like, literally human waste. And the things that they are telling Harley Quinn, she's like... We have to change you in a completely different way because these tactics aren't working. So she actually kidnaps these people that are extremely bad people and is forcing them to change through torture. And just to go in a little bit more in depth, just to say that she takes people like, for example, someone who doesn't want people to unionize and actually have genuine rights for them when they work there. Or another person who treats their son like actual dog shit for no reason. And it's very nice because it just feels like we just took Harley Quinn and we just, just decided to go left instead of right and having something very new and fresh. It feels very nice to see. Because honestly, the more I think about it, this is something I wanted because we usually get with Harley Quinn the same thing over and over again with like some minor differences, but we still get stuck in that same iteration or era of Harley Quinn. We only either get A, the one with the Joker and how much she loves the Joker, or B, we get the iteration where it comes like so with Poison Ivy and how much she sort of loves her. And I'm glad we get a C option. We get something brand new and something completely different like we do for other characters like Superman or Batman. The best way I can honestly describe it is like when you're eating healthy, unhealthy all the time and you're like, damn, I need a fucking salad because I'm at actually get fucking diabetes or something bad might happen if I keep fucking eating all this fried food over the cases. And one of the craziest part is, no pun intended, is that it's all genuine when it came to Harley Quinn. She genuinely wanted to change these people and she didn't actually want to like hurt people like Barbara. Someone that she looked at as an actual friend. And then there's the last thing which is like a little change that I do love is just like how monotone she gets when she speaks and she's talking when she's in costume. It sounds really nice. It's like a little bit of a flip in the switch. Now I think it's a good time to talk about someone who's the main event and sort of just like one of the main things in the season that gets sprinkled then you see him throughout some episodes here and there and then he gets like two or three episodes to himself by the end of it and it's Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent is a character I always liked and he did extremely well in the original animated series. Now you feel bad for him, you just see his descent and that's no different here but the main big difference for Harvey Dent here is that he's really sleazy. He's actually a bit of an asshole in this iteration and has somewhat of a weird moral code that slowly just deteriorates as we get to the end of it. And by the time he does turn into Harvey Dent and what happens to him by the end of the season it makes me still do feel bad for him. For some of the sleazy stuff that he was doing he's a lawyer so he actually was paying certain key witnesses to actually go take a trip or not to be a part of this court case or he would also threaten some people saying oh I'm gonna be married soon so you better talk to me nice and rarely enough in the same breath he still wanted to clean up the streets he wanted to actually make Gotham a better place but as we all know there's no happy stories in Gotham and this is one of my favorite things when it came about this show right is just the idea of just seeing the villain and then showing them 
them under a microscope and showing how they are and who they are. And for some of them, you feel actually bad for them. For others, you're like, you got what you deserved at the end of the day. Then there's one villain I have to talk about specifically because there's sometimes Batman villains that are just so funny or so insane in the way that they're portrayed or shown to you that it's just sometimes hilarious. And it has to be James Craddock easily. James Craddock only targets the underprivileged and the poor and not the rich. What the actual fuck? <laughs> also, I find it really interesting because it's usually not a lot of times where Batman does a lot of supernatural stuff, but it's always interesting when you do see him do it. And this time he's like trying to fight an actual ghost. And seeing Batman struggle and just have to admit the defeat, like, okay, the supernatural does exist. <laughs> it, it will always get me. Then there's also something on the side that I do have to mention and give this show its kudos for. And the kudos I have to give the show for is the ability to actually kill some people off. Like they will actually sit there and kill two characters I was not expecting whatsoever to actually die that die like there's actual consequences when it comes to this show and that could easily be hit or mess when it comes to this show and i feel like it does it pretty well but i wonder how they're going to keep continue keep going forward are they going to create new villains or are they going to continue having some of the old ones be re reoccurring here and there for sometimes and it makes me wonder because i don't know if they might not be on for that long or that many seasons or if they just want to actually just take a left turn and see where things go if they do end up killing characters it just makes me very interested in general and then also i do have to mention there was sometimes there was weird animation like the animation looks sometimes a little undervalued and a little under the weather sometimes and it feels a little bit weird here and there like this one or that one right there but other than that i really highly suggest batman the cape crusader give it a chance give it a watch see if you like it like comment subscribe and tell me what you guys think of it in the comments but i'm actually gonna cover the video here i do want to say a few things before i do get out of here well really one thing if anything my mic had did break if you guys saw in the community notes so i didn't actually was here for a while i just sat, sat here looking at fucking bullshit or just doing nothing or maybe just playing a few video games here and there just fiending to give you guys a video but i'm here i'm back and I'll hopefully next week where i'll try to have two uploads don't promise on it because some things might happen next week but i'm gonna try my hardest my best to give you two a whole videos uh so look forward to that to next week and also uh if you guys want to have any more updates look at my community notes if uh, anything happens and i see you guys in the next one goodbye